next guest is a talented young actor you know from The Leftovers and Watchmen. Next, he plays the fictional jazz trumpeter Sidney Palmer alongside Margot Robbie and Brad Pitt in Babylon. It opens the theaters December 23rd. Say hello to Giovanna Depo. <laughs> Been a long time. I haven't seen it in a while. It has. It's always You've been working, I guess, huh? I'm trying. I'm trying. This to movie, uh, for those who don't know, is about Hollywood in the 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, you play a, a trumpet player. Do you play the trumpet? Yeah, but what is play? What is play the trumpet though? Right? Like it's, <laughs> it's more. It's more like an idea. That I don't subscribe to. So no, I don't play the. trumpet. It's pretty specific, actually, playing the trumpet. You put your lips right on it. You right. hold the valves, and then you buzz, right? Yeah. You, well, you try to, and you know, maybe a good sound comes out, or maybe it doesn't. It's did you kinda... tell them you played the trumpet before the movie? I did. I did something. <laughs> <laughs> I did something that I wouldn't condone any actor doing, whether he's a beginner or a veteran, is lying on your resume. Uh, well, oh, every actor lies on their resume, and then. And they call it acting afterwards, right? right? Right. You did. You wrote. You on the resume. You wrote that you played. They read your resume. Wait, at this well, point? they asked. They were. They were like, you know, does he play the trumpet? And then, of course, my reps called and asked. And I was like, yeah, of course. Like, I've, I've been playing since middle school. But the truth is, I played briefly in middle school and then quit once it got difficult. Yeah. Right. It's kind of true, then, I guess. Yeah, just a little bit. So you, how long did you play in middle school? I think like two weeks. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you were in the band for two weeks. I was huh? in the band for like two weeks, but it's like you start off playing like Mary Had a Little Lamb, you know, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And then once you start actually playing, you know, more complex songs, I was just like, you know what? I feel like sports is my route. So I think that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're either going to be on the field uh, marching with the band or playing with the team. <laughs> right. And trust me, when it comes to dating, you're probably better off playing with the team. Right. <laughs> yes, I was playing the clarinet in the band, so I know that for a fact. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh, thank you. They, they always have that ready. You're handsome, man. It's one thing we're right on with here at this show, you know? It's like... <laughs> so often I have to wait, but never for that. Yeah. Okay, so you, you fake play. It looked like you were playing the trumpet. You did a good job of pretending you played the trumpet. I appreciate it, yeah. You're playing the trumpet, and um, near the beginning of the movie, there's this, this scene. Right. It's a big party, and it's an incredible movie scene. Yeah. It's this huge, how many people would you say are in this scene? Oh, it has to be like close to 200 or 300. Something like that. Something At like least that, 100 yeah. of those people are naked, right? Absolutely. Sex going on, Everywhere. naked, nudity, everything. You're in the middle playing your trumpet. <laughs> was that, I mean, was that as chaotic as it seems like it was? Uh, I mean, it was a crazy party. I mean, we filmed that scene for about 12 days. And there was a lot, <laughs> right, it sounds cool, like, like a 12-day party, but yeah. I mean, I've, I've been in you know, a lot of different cool projects, so I'm kind of used to what is called for in a scene, but the funniest thing was some of the, the guys that you see me playing with on the band, they're actual musicians. Right. And so they didn't get the script, and they don't really know what's going on other than the music that they're supposed to be playing. And I remember how shocked they were to see all of the nudity and all of the sex going on, and there was one older guy who was playing the trombone, and he didn't speak, like, at all, like, while we were filming. And I remember just looking at him when we when they called you know called action and the, the robes drop and everything and he's like, breasts. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it. And then he just goes back and he's like he puts his wig on and he starts warming up his trombone and he's just like. Right. Trombonists are very literal people. <laughs> yes, breasts. That's pretty great. It's also, it's funny you say 11 days it took to shoot that scene because it's, it's weird, you know, to see somebody naked for a little while, but to see that same person naked every day for two weeks. Are you, like, having lunch naked? How does it work? Did... I mean, I don't think, yeah, no, no. no, they, no. they definitely kept the robes on. No naked lunch, <laughs> As much yeah. as they could. And there are a lot of big stars in this movie. Yeah, I absolutely. mentioned Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie. Did you form, did you bond with anyone in particular? Uh, all of them, we really got along. All of the uh, main cast really got along really well. But naturally, uh, my first day on set with Brad and Flea, uh, we instantly bonded over motorcycles. And Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Absolutely. Yeah. He was fantastic in the film. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, now, he's, he's super used to people being naked. In fact, <laughs> like, he's a musician and have no problem being... Right. Yeah, right. But, um, 
uh, the three of us, we bonded over motorcycles. We we love riding Harley ah, Harley Davidson. Gotcha. So so we had. Oh, a, yeah, you like to ride motorcycles, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, like we had a trip kind of planned. Like it was like a tentative thing. Like I asked Brad, I was like, "You ride? We should ride." And he was like, "Hell yeah, get Flea to uh, to organize it." And it kind of like it just never happened because everyone's busy. Can I just suggest that maybe the part where it went wrong is get Flea to organize it? <laughs> Absolutely. So don't get Flea to organize it. Absolutely, because, and he was, to be fair, he was getting ready to go on a tour, so I feel like he should have left the planning up to you me. You guys could have followed the Red Hot Chili Peppers bus and I'd the motorcycle. I'd have done it. It would have been so badass, for sure. <laughs> but that's still a possibility, yeah, that trip. Yeah, of course. Trip. Of course. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. When you go on a motorcycle trip with guys, is, is there, like, you're not talking when you're riding, right? No, not really. So you're just quiet. Yeah. It's like almost like being in that submarine with Jim Cameron. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's an analogy that no one understands. Um, <laughs> when you get on the Harley, do you feel like a different person? Yeah, I feel like everyone who gets on a Harley and actually can master that type of a bike, you want to feel tough. I mean, there was an instance, to, to bring it back to uh, me and Brad and Flea going on a ride, I wanted to get back on a bike again. Whenever you take time off, you got to get back on it just to refamiliarize yourself with it. So I wanted to take it to wine country. So I took my bike, and you remember, I have like a big bike with a yeah. sound system and all of that, because I right. like to listen to music. And so I'm in stop and go traffic on the highway, and I see like a biker gang coming behind us. And this is stop and go traffic, so I'm sitting like in my spot and I'm just holding it. And I, I don't want to say what the biker club is, you know, for my own safety, but uh, they were coming <laughs> up, and I was like, this is the best opportunity to look cool because I already had like my Sons of Anarchy little skull cap helmet and my jewelry on and my shades. And so I was like, okay, 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 ready. Siri, play Badass Biker Boys tracks. And that's T-R-A-X-X-X, not T-R-A-C-K-S, you know? <laughs> uh, and Siri's like, so Biker Badass tracks, is that correct? And I'm like, correct. And so in this playlist that's happening, you know, that's getting ready to come out, the bikers are pulling up and, you know, sometimes you get kind of rogue songs coming in that you don't remember adding. So you, <laughs> so you, hear, you hear the bikers coming up, you know, you pull up. And then out of nowhere, Ann Murray starts playing. <laughs> and so you can imagine like a bunch of tough Ann guys. Ann Murray? Yeah, you can imagine a bunch of tough guys coming in and I'm just ready, like, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. And then you just hear, and no, I just fall in love again. And I'm just like, you got to own it, right? And I look, <laughs> I look to the left and I'm like, yeah, and the biker's just like, <laughs> and I look to my right, and there's like a guy in like a Volvo with his family, and he looks at me and he's like, <laughs> You're straddling a line there. I tried to tightrope. I don't know, I gotta tell you, if I was in a biker gang and I pulled up next to a guy who was so secure he was listening to Ann Murray That's on his right. Harley, mm -hmm. I'd be scared. Should be. You should be. You should Watch be out for scared. me on the road listening to Ann Murray. <laughs> Snowbird will be next for sure. <laughs> well, you know a lot about Ann Murray. I know, right? I never would have guessed you for an Ann Murray guy. You know, I'm a very complex guy musically, man. I, yeah. try, to, I try to cross all. You, you go deep. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to have you here. Uh, the movie is it's called Babylon. It opens in theaters on December 23rd. Thanks for being here. Joe Bonadepo, everybody. We'll be right back with Dawes. Put on Dawes.